Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Friday. Welcome to Breakfast Club. And most importantly, welcome to World Penguin Day. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, so there is obviously only one way we were going to celebrate some day like this. And that is by streaming live from our colony of African penguins and by welcoming our Steinhardt Aquarium curator, Vicki McCluskey. Hey, Vicki. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Happy Thanks Friday. Happy Friday. Mm -hmm. Happy Friday. Um, Happy so, day. Yes, usually on Breakfast Club we host um, experts who give kind of informal presentations or talks on different subject areas. But today we're gonna get even less formal and we're just gonna hang out. So me, Vicky, our penguins and you guys. So instead of saving questions to the end like we normally do, we're just gonna take them as they come in. So roll them our way, get cozy, grab some coffee, grab your crit kids, friends, whatever you need. And um, yeah, let's do it. If we could have our there they are, the beauties. There they are, <laughs> waiting for their food. Yeah, so Vicky, um, just to get started, can you kind of like introduce us to the colony and tell folks what they're gonna see today? I can do that. Uh, this is our colony presently at 13 penguins. We have 12 adults and one juvenile. And we are expecting to receive um, one more bird from Tulsa as soon as the world goes back to kind of normal again. Uh, we'll be doing some shipments and he will be coming to us from Tulsa to be a partner for our youngest girl, Stanley, who's the most adorable penguin. <laughs> um, and I, these guys, I can tell they're out. They probably have already been in the water, taking their morning swims and their baths. And they are waiting for Amy, one of our penguin biologists, and she will be coming out with a scale because breakfast time is weigh-in time <laughs> and mm -hmm. everybody knows you should always weigh in in the morning yeah better to do it that way be a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> so um we we call these behavioral enrichment sessions and not only do they keep the biologists entertained but they keep the animals um entertained as well it's a little bit of enrichment for them it's also imperative for us to be able to get the weights on the animal without stressing them out. Mm -hmm. So you'll just see them. They just step right up onto the scale. Uh, Amy will have a recorder, which I believe is going to be Sparks today. So she'll be calling out the weights and he'll be recording the weights and how many fish each of the birds eat because we track that at every meal every day. Right. And you mentioned um, you mentioned penguins kind of coming and going. So we should probably start with just mentioning this is a species survival plan colony. And like, what does that mean? Tell us a bit. Uh, species survival plan. So what we want to do is we want to keep all the resident African penguins in the 50 plus AZA facilities, zoos and aquariums. We want to keep that population genetically diverse and healthy. So what we do is we make sure that the mean kinship between pairs is the least related as possible. Ah, that sounds really heavy for Friday morning, but pretty much it's kind of like we meet every three years at um, a breeding and transfer plan. And actually Steinhardt Aquarium hosted that last year in San Francisco, which is super cool. The neat thing about that program is that, or that meeting is that the representatives from each of the facilities mm -hmm. come to the table and those are the people that know the birds, know the personalities, know the relationships. So not only do we have a population biologist talking about the relatedness between potential recommended pairs, but we also have all the people that know the birds personalities so they can weigh in and say, that sounds, that looks good on paper, but in real life, these, this bird is not going to be a good match with that bird or this type of personality or this is the age or they've not been great parents or they have been good parents that kind of stuff mm -hmm. I feel like humans need that as much as penguins do well you said that Laurel <laughs> <laughs> so, <I'm not>. <laughs> <laughs> Jocelyn asks um so speaking of how penguins are different and um social and, and things like that Jocelyn asks, how smart are penguins? I heard they are as intelligent as crows and ravens. Super smart. Yes, a little too smart. <laughs> um, oh, see, they're so smart that they're already jumping up on the scale for Amy there, I see. They're all ready to go. Um, 
here's what I love about penguins. I started working with them about 15 plus years ago. And actually, originally, they were not on my list per se. But as soon as I started working with them, and I realized how smart they were, and their general different personality types and demeanors. Um, and you know, they have their days. You yeah. just never know. You never know who's going to be snuggly and who's not going to be mm-hmm. that particular day. Um, and all the relationships between the birds. It's interesting to watch a colony. They're colonial birds, right? So they're all living around each other, but then they're also very territorial. So it's super fun to watch all the interactions between the birds and how they posture and how they communicate to each other. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some kids watching from school, um, which I think it's like a good thing to ask you would be, how did you get your job? Like, what did you study and what was your career path like? Oh, well, that was a, it started a long time ago. (laughs) Um, And actually, whenever people ask me, how do you get into animal husbandry positions? I usually say the same thing. And that's you have to volunteer. Volunteering Mm -hmm. is the best. I actually went to an exotic animal training and management school after I got my first degree, um, which I got a lot of hands-on experience. And then I just started working down at San Diego Zoo and um, started doing educational programs. And it kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that most of my positions came from me initially being proactive, going to the facility, asking if they needed volunteers, working with people and getting to know the staff and the animals. And it kind of went from there. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then when I worked at San Francisco Zoo is when I started working with penguins. And once you start working with penguins, everybody forgets you worked with anything but penguins. <laughs> <laughs> penguins, um, are, penguins are big ticket. People love the penguins. Yeah, yeah. And what are we seeing on screen right now with the biologist and the, um, with our colony? So I see Amy. I think that I think it looks like the birds are behaving pretty well, um, probably except for Stanley. I don't know if you guys can see. (laughs) Stanley's our juvenile. So she's the only one in there that doesn't have a tuxedo yet. She has not gone Mm -hmm. through her first molt and she's got the Tiffany turquoise band. Mm -hmm. Um, And right now, since she is not paired up with another bird, she really likes to pester the biologist. (laughs) So Amy's probably trying to get each bird to come up, stand on the scale, get their initial fish. Mm -hmm. Sparks, I can see, is writing it down in the background. And one of the questions we get a lot of the times is, why do you hand feed the birds their fish? Why don't you just, you know, throw the fish in, in the water and let them get it? And we do that because... All the birds get supplemental vitamins mm-hmm. every day. So it's super important that we make sure everybody right. gets their vitamin fish. And then we also do have some of the older animals are on um, extra like glucosamine mm-hmm. or whatever arthritic meds they might potentially need. So we have yeah. to make sure everybody gets their specific stuff. So that's okay. why we do that. Yeah. And um, Jason is asking how much each penguin eats every day. So it depends on the time of year. Mm -hmm. Um, However, as a general rule, uh, they get about, they usually, penguins this size eat about a pound of fish per bird per day. So that's a lot of fish. Yeah. Um, And it's, you know, fish fish cost a lot of money. (laughs) So penguins eat a lot of fish. So um, it's great when we can get support to get fish for the penguins. Um, That's something that's super helpful. Mm -hmm. in South Africa for the facilities that are rehabbing and trying to raise up animals there. Um, Fish is probably the most needed item. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that later. There were days that I was in Africa and we ran out of fish. Um, But uh, it does depend on what's going on in the bird's life. So the reason we like to get weights is because weights are indicators of animal health. Uh Um, you can, right before these penguins go into this molt, so I talked about Stanley going into her first molt, and penguins go into what's called a catastrophic molt. So all at once, it's all going to happen all at once in a couple of weeks. They're going to push out all their feathers, and new feathers are going to regrow in. While this is happening, they're not waterproof. They're not mm-hmm. waterproof when they're molting, so they're landlocked. 
Hmm. In C2 in Africa, if that was going to happen to you, you were going to be landlocked for a couple of weeks and not going to be able to go fishing. You're going to have to pack some weight on to live off of, right, to sustain yourself while you're molting. And growing new feathers is a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to regrow all your feathers at once. So what the birds do right before they molt is they tend to really start eating. I mean, it's, you know, a, a bird that might eat like two to three herring a day and go up to like 15 herring a day. It's amazing. I don't even know where it goes. Sometimes I've been giving out herring and I'm like, I don't, I physically <laughs> can't see where all of this fish is going. Um, but they'll bulk up. And then, so when they do go into molt, then they don't eat. They normally do not eat at all while they're molting. Mm -hmm. um, these guys, Right. They've got it great because they've got Amy to come in here and hand them fish whenever they need. Mm -hmm. Oh, we may be frozen. Or I may be. So if anyone can hear me, apologies, we're having some technical difficulties. Hey everyone, just apologizing. We're having some technical difficulties and lost Vicky for a moment. So we'll get her back as soon as we can. Um, in the meantime, well, I don't have a lot of penguin information to offer, but um, somebody did ask how we're taking care of the animals during our closure. So we have about 40,000 live animals at the Academy, which is obviously um, a lot. And we basically, we have two teams. We'll ask Vicky to speak more to this when she comes back because I'm not as familiar with the details, but we have two separate teams of biologists. So we wanna make sure that if um, anyone gets sick on one team, that we have another team that can swap right in so that the animals are always taken care of. And normally when we um, are open, we offer two, uh, feeding presentations every single day, which you can see either at the Academy or online. And this is probably a really good time to mention that if you love penguins, we have a free app for iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Android, and it's called Pocket Penguins. So go ahead and download that and you literally can get three different views of our colony 24 seven. So keep asking your questions. We'll have a lot stored up for when Vicky gets back. And someone is asking about the little colored bands that you can see on their wings. And um, that's actually a really good way to recognize bonded pairs. So the male and female in a bonded pair will have corresponding arm bands. And I'm trying to look and see if we can see Stan Lee, which is the juvenile penguin that Vicky mentioned and looks all gray. But I don't see her right now. I like the question about whether penguins bond with people. That's a good one for us to ask Vicky when she gets back. And Elizabeth, I see your question about temperature. That's also a good question. I know that the habitat does um, fluctuate throughout the year. They also have sunrise and sunsets, which is pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna go big with the penguins again and I'll drop off screen and try to get in touch with Vicki, but keep your questions coming and we'll loop back as soon as we can with her.
Oh, hello. We are back with Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Can you hear me? Hi. I can Hi. hear you. Hi. Well, we had some questions come in while you were gone. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and ask. We had a question about the wing bands on uh, bonded pairs. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to how that works? I can do that. I'm going to put this down and, <laughs> not, and not move. Don't to touch my, anything. Touch nothing. Okay. Uh, yes. So we need ways to identify the birds, especially if they're moving quickly while we're feeding or if you guys want to know which bird is which. And so we use the colored wingband. And um, if you see a pair that have the same colors, that is a bonded pair right now. And you can tell which ones are the boys and which ones are the girls because the males are banded on their right wings and the females are banded on their left wings. Great, and what is That's the temperature? Sorry, what is the temperature in the, um, Elizabeth asked about the temperature in the habitat. And then I also remember that you even vary things like sunrise and sunset and things like that as well, right? We absolutely do. So it's a very intricate lighting program. Uh, they get a pre-dawn and a dawn and a pre-sunset and um, they have, excellent engineers and then they have a basking spot which i'm not sure you can see from this camera but they have also a separate basking spot if they want it even warmer and then the temperatures are seasonal um however we uh gauge we make their temperatures kind of the same as we have here right in south africa they they would be totally reversed mm -hmm. um but that would be way too confusing for us to keep track of so we just kind of roll them with where we're going here i believe right now it's april April 82nd, <laughs> is that what day it is right now? Um, and uh, uh, they sh the water will be warming up. So I believe the water temp now is at 67 mm -hmm. and the air temp is probably up around the same between 67 and 70, probably more like 70 right now, it's mm -hmm. a little bit higher. So it'll get a lot warmer in the next few months and then cool down again. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. And is that really, that's a, uh, do those kind of seasonal cues trigger the, like the kind of mating and nesting behaviors that you're looking for? So it's interesting. And we're actually in the middle of a couple of studies right now to track that because mm -hmm. uh, this species of penguin is not a migratory species, right? They stay basically around um, Cape of South Africa. So they're not as much on a schedule as some of the migratory birds are, right? Because if you're going to go swim a few thousand miles at some point with everybody else, you got to do everything at the same time. Right. Uh, so since these guys don't have to do everything at the same time, they do queue into seasonal temps. So in C2, they would be doing that. And in Southern Africa, they would be, there's definitely seasons. Um, but these guys, because there's not a lot of the environmental pressures that the birds have that are in C2, they follow sort of a loop, it's more like a set of guidelines <laughs> than strict rules here. Um, but we did just have many of the pairs lay. So I believe they just, uh, most of them have come off the eggs at this point. So I think we had about three or four pairs that were sitting and incubating over the last month and a half. Okay. I think oh, cool. removed them. Yeah. Yeah. So now would be the time, but then they can also go through another season because again, these guys, particularly in this habitat, they kind of do it whenever they want. Right. Um, but yeah, they will kind of cue into the warmer temperatures usually. Okay. And then everybody will start to molt. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Annie asks, uh, Albie and Emmett would like to know why penguins like fish so much and if they eat anything else. Sometimes they might take other things like squid mm -hmm. every once in a while. And we have offered our birds some other things for enrichment. Our guys are kind of like, we're pretty used to the kinds of fishes that you give us. And it's, they play with it a little mm -hmm. bit and then not so much. Um, they are pretty much just fish eaters. Mm -hmm. And they have adapted to be fish eaters. They took advantage, like a long time ago, they came out of the water and they went back into the water because when a lot of the large 
animals that were living in the water at the time died out. There was a lot of niches available. So a lot of animals went back in, a lot of the water birds went back in. So they evolved to be strong swimmers. And these guys, I can tell you from firsthand experience, have extremely sharp beaks. <laughs> <laughs> so they have this cool move we like to call the bite and twist. Um, and that does actually help them snatch slippery fish in the water. And they have all kinds of adaptations to keep the fish, grab the fish, keep the fish, flip it, get it down, down the gullet. Right. Yeah. That sounds a little bit challenging for biologists. <laughs> well, luckily, mostly if they're in the, if they're in the regular good mood, um, they'll take it from the biologist and it's not too much of a problem. The only time it might be a little difficult for the biologists is they are sitting. They're very, like I said, very territorial. Mm -hmm. um, we're lucky that our nest boxes are accessible from the back. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit easier for us to get the right. fish to the birds that are sitting on the eggs as opposed okay. to going in right. the front. Yeah. <laughs> we had, that's kind of related. We had a few questions from people who are just curious how the birds and the biologists interact, like whether they recognize the people who care for them and have favorites and things like that. They absolutely do. Um, <laughs> they will definitely, they recognize that they probably know Amy the best. She's probably in there the most. Um, mm -hmm. They know their penguin team members, people uh, that go in there and feed them all the time. So they'll, they will uh, go up to these up. Oh, there she goes up. Oh, I don't know who's up. Is that homie? I believe that is homie talking to Amy right now. <laughs> oh, we're going to do a painting. So, um, I don't know if you guys can see on the screen, but I believe that homie. It's and homie homie does a lot of the paintings, and Amy is doing an enrichment session. And what she just did was she took homie and put her in the little paint thing, and homie puts feet in it, and then she walks across the canvas. So we get cool penguin paintings. It's kind of fun for the birds, and they just run back and forth with the biologist. Yeah, I know and, it's like killing people not to be able to see right now. So we will drop a video into the comments section yeah. later so that you can see how this actually works. Yeah, I think we have a couple cute ones of mm -hmm. Homie and uh, Stanley doing the painting. Some of the birds are a little bit more grudging. Like we do have we do have some senior citizens in there. Mm -hmm. And that that's actually why um, if you guys are big Cal Academy penguin fans, you know that they were not in their front of house habitat for about a month. And that was because we went in and we did some rock work because we do have some older birds and we wanted to modify that rock work so it wasn't as hard for them to get out of the water, walk around. Um, right. We have a 36-year-old bird, Dawson, that just, she just had a birthday last month, I believe. Oh, wow. So. That, that ties really, that ties in well to, um, I'm not going to try to read the, the Facebook handle, but a question that's just kind of asking about the age range in the colony. So what is the, we, I know we have a juvenile and then you just said, did, mm -hmm. how old did you say the oldest was? Uh, Dawson is 36 years old oh. and uh, Stanley is, I believe, 18 months mm -hmm. old. And then we have a lot of in the middle guys, 10, 15, but we also do have a lot in their 20s. And we actually have another lady who's, I believe, 32, I think Opal's 32 at this point. Oh. So um, we we do have, and I know everybody loves penguin chicks. I mean, we love penguin chicks too, but we also have to remember that we care for our residents from you know cradle to grave. And when birds get to a certain age, when I was talking about that meeting that we all go to, that, that's a, something that is a factor mm -hmm. when we decide about pairs. And no facility is going to ship at older an older animal. We don't want to stress them like that. So mm -hmm. we have to remember that we do have to take care of our older residents that are, are probably not going to be having chicks anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're still important and vital member of the population. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Um, we had a question um, from Sarah who would like to know, does the Academy have its own vet and healthcare facilities or do the penguin tra penguins travel for checkups? Uh, well, sometimes they can if they have to see a specialist. Um, Homie has had to see a specialist about her cataracts. So <laughs> Homie's one of our older birds too, and she had cataract surgery, and she she does go to a specialist. Sometimes they come to us, but 
Uh, these birds are super spoiled because they have uh, Dr. Freeland Dunker, who is one of the foremost exotic animal vets in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Plus for free mm -hmm. uh, and he is with the academy full time and uh Freeland and I have been working on penguins for a lot of years. So um they have an excellent health care plan here at the Academy. Yeah, and we kind of have our own little hospital as well, right? Mm -hmm. We have an excellent lab. Um and we have a lot of facilities. Oh, Amy's waving at us. <laughs> I think that was, oh, that's Stanley. I can tell by the way she's standing at the rock. Oh, Where yeah. are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going, people? Oh, yeah, you can see that the tuxedo is not, mm. there's not a distinct tuxedo pattern on there. Right. She. We're hoping that she um, goes into molt relative in the next month or two. Hopefully, as the months go on and facilities maybe go back to mm -hmm. I don't even know if you can say normal anymore I'm not sure what we're yeah. saying but when we um and we can start transferring animals again uh we'd like for her to have her adult clothes on when she uh, meets her potential partner okay. Bernie <laughs> oh oh it's already set does that does that have does yeah. that actually help with um imprinting or, or is imprinting is probably the wrong word but why is it important to have that adult coat then? Just because it signals I'm an adult? Exactly. Okay. So uh, she will be recognized as an adult and not a juvenile. Okay. And gotcha. more likely for a, a pair bonding to happen. Okay. When they have their adult plumage. And yeah, um, we already know because at that meeting last year, so what we do at that meeting is we set the uh, transfers for the next three years between facilities. Oh, wow. So, um, so I have a, a friend who is our actual, she's the stud bookkeeper for African penguins, Shauna. And uh, she told me Bernie, Bernie's a good guy. And, <laughs> and he, he was looking for a buddy yeah. time for him. So okay. Okay. as long as he's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. And they were <laughs> recommended. So when that happens, when something like that happens, just to give you guys an idea of what we talk about when we're there is we'll talk about things like that. Like I, I have a juvenile male needs need a partner, and then we'll ask the population biologist. The population biologist will go through, pull up the genetics, because we, we have the family trees of all of the 1,200 plus birds that are in the resident population, and our population biologists are amazing, mm -hmm. and he would just pull that up on the screen, and we would look at the mean kinship, and if it looked good, be like, great recommended so Bernie and Stanley are a recommended pair okay that's cool um, I want to ask you one more question about the Academy before I, I do want to ask you more questions about how this species survival plan colony kind of supports those wild populations and what mm -hmm. that kind of back and forth between um, our biologists and the the areas that they're native to are but um, real quick while you were gone someone asked how we were taking care of all the animals during closure. And I kind of tried to answer it. And I know we've got two teams in play and a real strategy for being, okay, <laughs> slightly terrifying, but, but good, good health, good habits. Um, but can you speak to that a little bit, just how we're, how we're supporting those 40,000 animals during this time? We are busy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. But um, just to assure everybody, the biologists are coming in every day. So um, what we did is we immediately, a leadership, uh, as soon as we got the shelter in place order, leadership de uh, decided to close the building and we immediately went into figuring out a staffing plan. So um, we're doing what probably, I think most of the other facilities uh, are doing the same thing. We've, we've basically split the staff into two groups so nobody overlaps. Mm -hmm. So we have a group that comes in the first half of the week, the week and a group that comes in the second half of the week. And the nice part is that um, because our biologists are so well cross-trained, this doesn't sound right when I say it out loud, but uh, we, we have a lot of skills. The biologists mm -hmm. have a lot of skills and can take care of a lot of the animals in the building, So, which is great because now we have to. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we're working with half half of the staff on any given day. Um, but luckily for us, we have such a highly skilled biologist staff that we're, we're able to take care. And everybody, all the behavioral enrichment sessions are happening every day. 
Um, it's not just, we're not just coming in and, you know, throwing some food. Right. Same um, level of care as always. Same level of care. Mm-hmm. All the habitats are getting cleaned. The enrichment sessions are happening. The, it, a lot of the animals, and I know you guys have seen animals rolling around the building. <laughs> so some of our animals, a little bit harder to take them out, walk them around. Like, oh, I don't know referencing if our, Wait, let's just explain that because that sounded a little weird. Are you <laughs> talking about our Instagram stories of like macaws? Yeah, the, or, okay. the macaws. So, so the macaws Cal Academy, a lot of field trips. <laughs> yeah, Cal Academy on Instagram. And there have been some really like brilliant highlights of the macaws taking tours of the academy. And just, yeah, it's a, there's, it's a strange time, but there's some pretty cool opportunities within that. And you guys have been doing an amazing mm-hmm. job of, yeah, it's caring for all of those animals. And we should say not just animals too, like the entire rainforest, like all the plants in the rainforest and just all of those habitats. It's like really extraordinary. Yeah. And we're, we're so grateful. And there's so many people right now saying how much they miss the Academy and can't wait to come back. And yeah, we miss all of our visitors too. And um, we hope things like this give you like a little, little reminder or connection or whatever, but um, we're definitely looking forward to reopening. Hey, Vicky, I want to ask um, mm-hmm. about, this is, this is like a, obviously not a professional segue. It's just a, hey, let's segue. But um, uh-huh. I want to ask about Sand Cobb. Can you tell us a little bit about what that relationship is, what it means, all of that stuff? And actually, I'll go ahead and we'll pull up. I have some other photos we can show. Mm. Okay, where where are we in this photo? <laughs> Pretty sure this is a photo um, from Boulder's Beach. And so Sand Cobb, and we say Sankob because the full name is the Southern African Foundation for the Conservation of Coastal Birds. And I'm not going to say that again. <laughs> so I'm just going to say Sankob. But Sankob um, is an NC2 organization that's been uh, rehabbing not just African penguins, so that is mainly what they work with, but they, uh, they do rehab all kinds of coastal birds. They actually have a few facilities now. We work closely with the facility that's in Cape Town, and we started really connecting with them probably about eight years ago. And so we do a few things. One of the things that we do directly, and we do this with the help of all of our visitors with our Roundup for Conservation program and our penguin conservation, um, the penny crushers, Mm -hmm. things like that. It doesn't you guys might wonder, like, I don't know if any of this is really actually doing anything. And I'm here to tell you, it does a lot. I'm going to tell you specifically exactly what we do with those funds. We send two biologists every other year out to South, South Africa to San Cobb to help with what's called the chick bolstering program. And if you guys remember, I kind of talked a little bit about what happens when these birds go into molt. When you go into molt, you're not, you know, you're not waterproof, you can't get food. Well, because of the overfishing that's been happening for years, um, the lack of food source and um, climate change, the birds in the colonies, the penguins in the colonies, the parents, they'll lay their eggs, the chicks will hatch, they will feed the chicks. They're not able to feed the chicks as much as they should be for the chicks to grow and fledge. When we say fledge, we mean you're on your own, kid, you know, kick them out of the nest. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not happening. Those those chicks aren't getting to that size and waterproof. And, and the, the sorry, mm-hmm. and that's because they're, the food source is really not, not there in the mm-hmm. wild anymore, right? Right. Definitely overfishing is a huge. Um, African penguins eat sardines and anchovies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we eat a lot of sardines. <laughs> Guess who else does? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's that's been an issue. That's why when I said earlier, fish are very important to this whole process. Um, but during that time, a lot of the parents are actually going into molt before the chicks are ready to go out on their own. Mm-hmm. So they can't feed them anymore because they're not waterproof. So the, the parents are out. They're out of food. And the chicks are not ready. What happens is San Cobb has monitors in the colonies, um, rangers that keep eyes on all of the animals. And when they see chicks that are not thriving, they will pull those chicks and bring them back to the facility. And that is where we come in and a lot of the other penguin biologists 
in AZA facilities, a lot of facilities, they ask to send, and the reason it's specifically penguin biologists, they ask for biologists that have worked with the animals Mm -hmm. and kind of know how to handle because penguins could be a little hard to handle. Uh, I don't know if that's generally known. Um, It looks really easy and cute with homie because homie's nice penguin. (laughs) And we have a video just in case anyone thinks this sounds easy and cute. Here, let me go ahead and, and actually do you want to, well, we'll just play it first and then you can kind of tell us what we're, what we're seeing here. Okay, let me get it going. Okay, yeah, so this is a video. Now, if you guys watch as um, the biologists are feeding, it depends on how many chicks are there. When I was there a few years ago, we had to feed 565 chicks every day. Wow. And they get, they get fed six times a day. So all you are doing is what you're watching these people doing in here is picking up chicks, feeding them, picking up the next chick, and then you just run your way through the pen. So literally uh, 565 times six was your, was every day? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, yeah. Doesn't seem, not just, yeah. you know, not just me. No. But a uh, <laughs> couple of us. But yeah, it was, uh, it, it, you know, taking care of babies. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the goal is feeding the chicks up like this. Um, you get them to a certain weight and then you get them waterproofed. And this is one of the swimming pens. So before they can get re-released back out to the colonies, we make sure they're of a certain weight. And Sandcob has vets on staff that they work with. They all get checked out. They are, we make sure they can swim, et cetera. Once they get all checked out, then that's when we bring them back to the colonies and we release them back out. And the cool thing, I think we have a release picture, maybe? Yeah. So this is one of our other bio, I think that's, I can't tell from the hat, it might be Holly. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We've sent quite a few biologists now, so we have a lot, I'm not sure which footage. So you guys can see, um, I believe this might be a release at Betty's Bay. I can't quite, I think it looks a little rocky. So I think it's Betty's Bay. So there go all the kids. And one thing you learn the first time you do a release is it's really important to put, put the box back up because sometimes they startle a bit and run back into the box. <laughs> um, it looks like these guys got the it pretty quickly. Yeah, I think they did have um, some stragglers though. Yeah, they're kind of like, oh. But the cool thing about penguins is that even though they're being fed by people for a month or whatever before they're re-released, uh, they're fine, mm-hmm. right? They're, they don't really imprint, like there's a lot of um, avian species that are heavy imprinters and you have to be very careful that they don't see you or associate you. Uh, penguins, you know, they kind of have that peace, thanks attitude <laughs> they're fine it is they just roll right back out and, and the chicks will hang together for a while um and one of the other projects that aza has been working with in c2 groups with is putting um transponders chipping the birds and putting transponders because what's important for us to figure out is now these we put these chicks back out we want to track them to track their success you know is it working and where are they going? Where are chicks going before they actually settle into a colony? So mm-hmm. they kind of cruise around for a year to two years and then settle back into a colony. And so that's some of the uh, data that we've been working on getting. And it's notoriously hard to get transponders on uh, water animals, mm-hmm. one thing. And um, the, the equipment is really expensive. The equipment that you actually use for the animal, the equipment to track it, there have been um, counters, I'm not saying this pretty right, but you know the chips that you uh, chip your dogs with? Yeah. So that if they get lost and we can read the chip and they know it. So those are the same kinds of, we call them pit tags, mm-hmm. uh, which I believe is personal identification tag. But um, we put those. You know, we chip the birds and then we also set up counters on the beaches so that it tracks when they cross 
the line when they come back into the colony. So then we can get a count and we can keep track of where they were released, where they settle back down, how many times they're coming in and out. Okay, Pretty cool. cool. Yeah, really. Um, so what is, and actually maybe we'll go ahead and put our um, colony cam back on. There they are. Can um, anybody see? Everybody's like nap time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're full. Um, and you can see anyone watching this right now, you can check in on our cam anytime. Just go to calacademy.org and search uh, webcam or penguin cam, whatever. Um, and again, you can download our Pocket Penguins app for any platform. But Viggy, what is the best way if people want to support our colony or sand cob work or both? What is the best way for them to do that? I want them to come back and visit as soon as we're open. That's mm -hmm. that's. That's the way we really like. I think the penguins miss their people cam a little <laughs> bit. Right, yeah. They miss their people TV a bit. Um, and then again, this is the Roundup for Conservation. Um, you can go, you can look up Stan Cobb, and there's also directly donate to Stan Cobb. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different organizations. I, we mainly, I said, we work with Stan Cobb, and we have our Penny Crusher. And what and is the Roundup, Roundup for Conservation? conservation? That's where if you are uh, purchasing an item in the gift shop mm -hmm. and it comes up to 1992 oh, gotcha. okay. mm -hmm. and they ask if you want to round up, right? They round it up to $20 mm -hmm. and then that eight cents goes towards, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up, That's right? For everybody that goes through it, it really does add up. And the if people are actually wondering about expenses and things like that um i wanted to let you guys know that again using those funds we were just able to ship an incubator to sand cob in south africa and basically what happened was sand cob uh, they also they also hand rear chicks from eggs so sometimes they'll be abandoned eggs in the colony and mm -hmm. if the birds walk off eggs or whatever happens, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can happen to you <laughs> when you're living in C2. So um, if they gather up eggs, they'll bring them back and they're able to incubate them and hand rear the chicks. So what was happening is they were expecting a large influx of eggs and they kind of sent out a, can anybody help us? We need some incubators. Mm -hmm. And they sent that through. So we work, um, I'm uh, one of the steering committee members for the African Penguin SSP. So um, when Sand Cobb has a specific need, they will let our coordinators know and our coordinators will, you know, ask all the uh, representatives from the institutions, you know, hey, can anybody, we need this or they're asking for this. And so they had sent out one that said, we need to make it we need an incubator and we can't get one for another three months so because this particular incubator is manufactured in germany and they had a backlog so mm -hmm. and they're like we 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 need it we're gonna need it pretty quickly here so we, we thanks to you guys checked our conservation fund and we had enough money that we were able to it was actually pretty tricky because <laughs> we wound up having we wound up having to buy an incubator stateside and, and then having it, it and having it there shipped there in yeah. the middle of all this yeah <laughs> that is, sounds like it should have been really not no, that hard but no it, it doesn't out. it sounds hard <laughs> tricky um but you know it happened i mean we wound we had it shipped to the our building because mm -hmm. that's how we had to do it and then we shipped it to south africa and it it made it in just in the nick of time. Yeah. So that was that was a super cool. I let me tell you, I was losing sleep. Yeah, of course. Make it there. I don't know yeah. if they're going to be able to get it. Um, but they did, and they sent us pictures, and it's in use, and it yeah. has eggs in it, which is yeah. super cool. So a real so. impact from people's support and mm -hmm. from those partnerships. Yeah, that's really cool. And I guess another really important way people can help is just by being conscious that. Um, that those food sources for penguin, wild penguins are in danger and you can do things like download the Seafood Watch app and make sure that you're kind of just eating fish that aren't um, yes. impacting other species that way too, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and <laughs> people that's ask right, a lot right. what we, yeah, yes, it absolutely is. Seafood Watch, I mean, it's a great, that's yeah. the easiest. 
I'm all about the easy button and red, yellow, green. <laughs> Pretty easy. Right. Yeah. I like it. Super right. Intuitive, super easy app. Yeah. Great. Red, yellow, green doesn't mm-hmm. get easier than that. It's yeah. Very yeah. nice to look at. Um, but people ask what we feed our, and we do not feed um, anchovies and sardines to our colony. We feed herring and capelin. Oh, did we lose? I don't know if it's me or Vicky. Did we lose Vicky again? Okay, I'm going to assume that's a yes and keep going. But um, we will go ahead and drop links for our pocket penguins, for ways that you can help support the colony and sand cob, um, and other kinds of related um, goodies in the comments section. And we are so happy that you joined us today for World Penguin Day. And if you're a regular Breakfast Club watcher, please come back next week. We've got all kinds of people coming up from Dr. Jack Dungbacher, who is our curator of ornithology and mammalogy, to Meridius Bell, who's our dive safety officer. And oh, we got Vicky back just in time to say goodbye. <laughs> I was just wrapping up. Vicky, thank you so much for being here today and taking time to talk to us about all this and introduce us to the colony. We like so appreciate it and we so appreciate your work and all the biologists work and caring for the animals during this time. Well, thanks to you guys to be letting us say hi to everyone while we're here. It makes us feel connected because we are in a big empty building. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we we love knowing that people are still wondering about the animals and love to have check-ins and let you know. Um, and shout out to all, again, shout out to all the animal care staff worldwide because I know uh, we we prioritize the animals over everything and I talk to colleagues globally and um, some people are struggling, but I mean, they're going in there and those animals are getting taken care of. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a real dedication, real, like, even bravery in some cases, and we so appreciate it. And let's do some more. Let's get some more biologists on here, show some more animals. Yeah, we all miss, we miss them. (laughs) Totally. Um, And they miss their people TV. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Vicki. Thank you to everyone who watched. We'll see you again soon. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye. Bye.